Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret zero, otherwise known as open position, and fret 12, focusing on the G note. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready. Did that thing learn to fly? Because here in Hollywood, California, we're living in the wild, wild left. No, we're not. You're a dumb, dumb. They call me a mudblood. They did not. Ah. Whatever, Phil. You're the you're the dumb one. You were once our best, most amazing invader. Now you're dumb. Also stupid. Because because you don't even know that two negatives cancel each other out, making a positive, Phil. One positive, the other negative. Or more specifically, one matter, the other antimatter. So by calling me a dumb dumb, you totally just called me doubly smart. Do you know what you're saying? Matter and antimatter have a tendency to cancel each other out, violently. The negatives annihilating each other, leaving only a super positive. Precisely. Under certain conditions. See, so that's why, that's why you're actually the dumb one, Phil. When two identical particles of matter and antimatter meet. Identical. You're, you're the dumb, dumb, dumb. You're a shoe, you're a shoe, you're a shoe. What if I want to be a, a purse, you know? Dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah, I kind of like the sound of that drum beat. No, 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 beat drums, beat drums. I'll have to work that into my next song. Beat drums, beat drums. Down, animal. Down, back, back, sit, sit. But anyways, that means, you're, that means that you're like the dumb one times three, Phil. You're dumb and no one loves you. That was really good. <laughs> no. No, you're the dumb one times infinity, times infinity, infinity plus one, infin because, because I assume infinity is a positive number. If they meet. Annihilation, Jim. Although I'm not totally sure about that, because, because nobody knows everything, you know? I, nobody knows. Not even us dumb dumbs. And it's very confusing. Which means doubly smart, just in case you forgot. Nobody knows. I just told you. Because because of the two negatives destroying each other thing, making a super positive. Total, complete, absolute annihilation. Of everything that exists, everywhere. What do you think, you're funny or something? We are not amused. Funny is funny does, Phil. Are you stupid or something? That's what my mama always said. Funny is, funny does. Stupid is, stupid does, sir. More like stupid is, funny does. Hey, hey, get that nose picking picture off the screen, Phil. I'll have you know I wasn't just picking my nose for no good reason during that guitar presentation. It just so happens that snot makes my fingers stick to the guitar strings better. You put snot on the ball? You know, edit that nose picking picture out, Phil. Hey, Patrick, can we edit that out? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's do that. How dare you? I'm the star of this production, dang it. I'm the star of the show. You're just the reason people tune in. Whatever. Let's just, let's just play some guitar. Picking up the pick in the right hand and some snot in the left. You got an arm like yours. I got to put anything on it I can find. Someday you will, too. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to the first tab to get that overview. We're looking at the C major scale and related modes. We started by looking at it in open position, which we defined as frets 0 through 3. This E representing the low or heavy string on our guitar, on our fretboard, the string closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to map out all the notes in a scale in open position is to create the chords from that scale starting with the one chord in this case the c major chord which we mapped out and discussed in detail we then went to the four chord because it has a major chord construction mapped it out discussed it in detail same with the five chord back to the two chord because it has a minor chord construction 
Same with the three chord, the six chord, and then the seven chord. The seven chord having a diminished chord construction. If we were to map out all the notes of all the chords that we constructed, we would basically have all the notes in the C major scale and related modes, which we can see in the blue notes on the open position here. We then moved to the middle of the guitar, which I would call position one or G-shaped position, learning this place not by first constructing chords, but first by constructing scales, the pentatonic scale, and then the seven note major scale, and how we can connect that to the open position. We then discussed each of the notes and the chord constructions that are in the C major scale, basically the related modes within that position. We then moved up to the next position, and uh, we did a similar process, so we can call that position number two or an E-shaped position. We looked at the pentatonic and major scale and saw how we can link it to the prior position as well as to the open position. And then we looked at each of the notes or modes within that position, although we'll talk more about modes specifically later. We then moved up to the next shape the next position, which I can call position three, or uh, the D position, same thing. We mapped out the pentatonic, we mapped out the major scale, and then we talked about each of the notes and basically modes within that position. And now we're going to the next position, which I would call position number four, or a C-shaped po position. Position number four, the C-shape position, is where the guitar is going to start over when we're looking at the C major scale and related modes. In other words, the notes on fret 12 are the same notes as open position on, in essence, the nut. So we can basically mirror what's going to be happening up here as to what's going to happen in open position, but adjust our fingering so that we can recognize the shape even though we're going to be playing it different in open position as opposed to uh, the position up top. Now, a quick recap of the color codings uh, that we have here. So we know that underneath, I would think of it as though all seven notes are in blue underneath. And then on top of that, we put the five notes, the one, two, three, five, six, which are related to the major scale on top in green, noting that that pentatonic scale only works perfectly in a C major and the related minor, or the sixth, if we were playing the sixth mode, doesn't fit perfectly when we're trying to make the fifth, the G, the tonic, as we are here, because the third of, of this chord construction we will make is one of the notes that are not in the pentatonic. So if you think in terms of pentatonics, then you want to be thinking, okay, if I was in the major or the minor, that would be perfect. If I'm in some other mode, like we're basically playing in mixolydian, I want to add that key note, the key note here being the B, because the B is going to be uh, the third. And then on top of those, we put these three notes because we're focusing in on the fifth, which means we're going to play, basically make it the tonic, which means we're basically playing in mixolydian, but we're not formally going to be thinking about being in mixolydian. We're going to basically be thinking we're making the fifth, in essence, the tonic. If I build a chord from that, we could see it will be a major chord construction. So that means this uh, fifth here is going to be our most important note. That's going to be the light green in G, then the red, which is going to be the third here, and then the, uh, the, the orange, which is going to be the fifth. Those are our three most important notes. And then the dark green and the blue are the added notes that fill out our uh, major scale. That's going to be the, the general uh, pattern there. Then we have these color schemes, and those are breaking out the guitar into four or five uh, uh, span chunks. And if we were to name those out starting in the middle here with what I would call position number one, starting basically on fret number five, we might call that a G-shaped position. Now, as we name it a G-shaped position, it gets confusing because we're basically looking at a mode, meaning we're focused on the G major, not the C major. But when I name the shape, some people will use the related major shape to name it. So I'm going to say, all right, well, if I do that, the related major sh uh, scale is the C major. And then if I looked at the shape within it, it would look like this. Boom, 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 
boom, boom. That's basically a G shape that is up here uh, in this position. So that would be a G shaped C, uh, C major, which I'd have to play like that or like that. So I can, I can name the shape that way, but I'm not looking at the C. I'm trying to build things around the G. So if I want to, want to build a G chord, it would look like this. So here's boom, boom, boom. Now note in here, the red is on the inside because that's the overlapping between the prior shape that's in purple. And then the red is on the outside over here because it's the overlapping. It's going to go from left uh, to right. The, the shape most on the left is going to be on the outside. The shape on the inside is, is, go, is what it's blending into. So we have this G, boom, boom, which you can also see this way. I kind of shortcut it to play it, to play this way. Do, do, do. I think that's the easiest way to do and mute this string. So that's going to be that one. And then if I go up from position one to what I would call position number two, again, if we name it in terms of its related major, which is the C, then I can pivot around uh, this C up top. So here was our C before, which had a G shape. If I pivot forward, then we get to uh, this shape, which was boom, 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 boom. That looks like an, an E major. So it's a bar chord, an E major bar chord that looks uh, like that. So you could name the shape based on that if you would like to, but we're looking at constructing the G major, which started from here. So it was here. And then I could see that G right there. So that's the end of my like uh, D shape. If I lean it forward, then I've got in essence, a C shaped here, boom, 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 uh, a, a C shaped uh, G major chord, which I can play this way, or I can play it this way. Uh, if I so choose and I can play it to, to like this if I want, or take that finger up. There's multiple ways uh, that you can see that one, but there is that. And then if I move to the next shape up, which is gonna be this green shape, and I name it once again around the C, I could call it a D shaped because I'm naming it in accordance uh, with, <laughs> with the C major uh, construction, which means I'd have this C right here. If I lean that forward, boom. I'd have uh, this note, this note, and this note. This is the little, the little D up top. If I was to see it in accordance with the C, but I'm not looking at the C once again, I'm looking at the G. So if I was to build a G shape around it, I would be starting with this G here, and I'd have basically an A shape. So this here, duh, duh, duh. These three, most people often see as, a, as an A shape, leaning back to this note, that would be uh, the, the open note if it was an open position for an A. So we have that there. And then we're in this C shape up top and we name it a C shape because if I look at the C position, then that would be our normal C shape in open position like that. It would just be moved up here, which again, because I'm not in open position, you could play uh, a couple different ways, which we'll talk about shortly, but we're focused in on the G again. So the G you can see here mapped out uh, in blue in this shape. So we have then this construction, boom, 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 which is basically our G shape, because if I played it in open position, which is mirroring now, these are the exact same positions, except that if I was had to bar this off, I'd have to do something like that, right? But since I don't have to do that, I can play it like this in open position, over here, since I have to bar this off, I can't play the whole shape usually, unless you're uh, quite dexterous with your fingers, but I can play the top bit like that. I can play this bit, these three, like with one finger like that, and I can play the top bottom bit, boom, 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 and lean this forward like that. So oftentimes when you're playing this shape, people often see these three notes and just think of an A shape. But remember the A shape is kind of, if you're leaning back to that G, or to the, to the root note leaning back this way. And it's a G shape if you're leaning forward uh, 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 this way. So that's gonna be the general idea. Okay, so then uh, once we have that, then we can think, well, how could we build this out? We could, we could play everything in one position. So we have this position here and we're kind of relearning the position over here. 
Now, we started by learning, if you've been working with our whole project, we learned all of these chords in open position. That's like the first thing we did. So you could basically take all the chords that you've learned over here and then reconstruct them into bar chords and play them all in this shape. So everything that you're doing here, if you're, if you're trying to make this of those chords over here and that would be a useful exercise we might touch on that a little bit but i don't want to go into that in too much detail because i can only map out we've only mapped out basically the g chord here uh, and not all the other all the other chords so we might do that exercise more later but that's one thing that we can do then of course we could basically try to do a mirroring exercise in terms of like noodling for example I could play basically the G up here and then noodle around some of these shapes and see if I can play a similar G chord and noodle around in these shapes in a similar way. And then of course I could play multiple chords over here and possibly target one note like this note or this note and, play, and noodle around in this shape to get used to this shape up top while, being, while playing multiple chords down here uh, so we can uh, do that and then we could of course try to map this shape backwards meaning I want to connect this shape to the prior shape to the prior shape this time focusing in on the G so that we can start playing horizontally up the neck uh, rather than just in one position so we can see how we can help ourselves maneuver basically moving around the pivot points which are, which are going to be the G's on the neck all right, first, let's just go through and basically play the scale. So if I'm gonna, just to get the scale in our mind, but instead of starting on the shape on the E or on uh, the C, as we did before, we're gonna start on the G. Now, if I was to rename this thing, I could call it the one, and that would mean we're playing in mixolydian, which is easier to do, right? Because I can, if that was the one, I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I want to keep in my mindset that I'm playing around the five. So I'm going to do something a little bit more difficult and say that's the five. I'm going to go from five to five to make the five, in essence, the root. So I'm going to say this is five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. And that brings me down to this G. I take that G down to this G. So I can say this is going to be uh, one, two, three, I'm sorry, I wanted to start at five. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. So that brings me up to this G. Let's go back. So five, four, three, uh, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five. That brings me to this G. I'm going to bring that back then to uh, this G. And so now I'm going to say this is going to be uh, five, four, uh, four, three, finish it off five four three four five so i can get that whole shape in there we can do the same thing up top here let's first think about it as though i'm going to use the same fingering so i can see that it is the same shape and i can feel that it's the same shape in my fingers and then we will alter the fingering to what you would normally finger in open position so to start off i'm going to start with it as a one because it'll be a little bit easier for me to be thinking like if I was going to be fretting over here. So I'm starting with my pinky. I would say this is gonna be one, fret the two on the nut, three, four, and then five on the nut, six, seven, and then open, I'm fretting the G on the nut, right? And that would be the eight. Now, if I was to play that basically uh, uh, in the normal fingering then, instead of playing this with my pinky, normally I would be using this fingering, so I might reach up with my ring finger and say this is going to be one, and then open, two, three, four, five, six, seven, open, eight. And then if I wanna switch again, going making that the fifth now, I'm gonna do the same thing, but now call it the fifth. So five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. So now I'm on this G. Let's go from that G up to this G. So now I've got the open 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I started up one again. Let's do it. Five. Five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. So that brings me up to this G. Let's bring it back down to that G. So five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five. So now I'm down to this G. Let's bring it back to this G. So now I'm gonna go, I'm on uh, this five, so I'm gonna say five, four, th three, what, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five. So now on this G, and then we can finish it off by going five, four, three, four, five. So that gets the kind of, uh, the, the mixolydian feel, or making that the root in our head. So now we can say, all right, let's go back on over here and think about the chord construction. So remember the chord construction is gonna be, here's the one, the three is always, you know, down one and back one generally, except between the kink and the tuning. And then if I reach down to that fifth, there's going to be the fifth right here. So this will be the top part of the shape. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult to play. If you just get the root of it, these two, jump back to just these three and that gives you a good feel and then if you put your pinky down here you can get that high end G if you wanted to so that in this case I'm taking these three that's all you need and then that one doesn't ring out or you put your finger down and get that high end G with the pinky finger over here that's going to be our major our, our normal positions on this side if I did that in open position same kind of idea obviously the full g boom 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 i don't have to finger kind of this a shape right part of the g the middle part of the g that's why i get this fingering which you can also you know put these two fingers down there's a couple different ways you can do that fingering if you wanted to pick up like these two notes and so on but if you wanted to just play these three that would still be a g you could just mute these top two or just put your finger right there and you have everything you, you need for a G. Most people don't do that, but you could do that if you didn't want quite as much of a heavy uh, bass note on top uh, with regards to uh, the, the G. All right, so that's going to be that uh, general idea. So now let's go through and, and uh, think we're going to target a particular note. And let's first try to get some idea of this mirroring technique uh, here. Uh, so, so let's think the different chords that we have learned. If we just look at the major chords within here, we've got like a G and then we've got the C and then we've got the F. Now, if I'm playing in around the fifth, which is a G, our little trick to resolve back home is to take the fifth of it, which in this case is a D, which normally has a minor chord construction in, in when I'm playing in a mixolydian or the C major, but I'm playing around the fifth. But if I convert that to a C, a D major, then that gives me more of a leading tone back to home. So that's gonna be my, that's out of key, but it gives you that leading tone so the ear will forgive you, right? So it's gonna go, I go from G to an A, for example, to an F, and then when I wanna go back home, here's the D minor and then switch into a D major. Out of key sounds a little out, but it's okay when you resolve, the ear forgives you basically is usually how that kind of works. So that's a, the little trick just to convert that fifth from a minor to a major that we want to possibly uh, keep in mind as we're noodling through this. Now, if I was to play something F O G and then the F and then the C, we can mirror that down here with our G like this. Now how about the F? The F I played like this, it's basically a bar chord. So it's just a bar chord and because everything repeats, we have the same thing up here. Here's our bar chord. It's a little hard to finger depending on your guitar or you can put this one down here and that's the small F, sometimes just those three fingers. It's played like that, same thing up top on that one. And then the C, 
is our open C like this. You can play it this way. You can play it this way. You actually have just these two, also a C. You can play those down here. If you play just these three, as we talked about before, you're, you're not getting the fifth, but you still get the flavor of it. And you can open up this G if you wanted to, playing the open G. And then you get that, you pick that one up if you played it that way, but you can also play it, you know, this way. And you can play it uh, this way to get, to get that sound in there. And then, of course, our D. Here's our D minor to switch to the D major. So if I pick that minor up and I have to shift that all the way up here, I'm not going to get that open D. You could. But it's going to be out of register. So I'm going to mute that. There's my D minor. Here's my D major to help me to resolve back to the G. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. You could kind of, again, kind of noodle around over here. And then convert all, everything you're doing in open position to the related uh, chords up top, having to deal with the fact that uh, now you don't have the, you have the, the nut is, is open now. So you have to use more of the bar chords and how you can convert those. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that now though, because I only have one like chord mapped out in, in terms of the G. So we might do that kind of exercise more later, but that's just something to point out. So the next thing we can do is try to say, well, what if I was going to target this note, for example, this G up top, I can think what are the, what are the positions around it and maybe try to mirror that in open position and play similar things here to there. So if I'm looking at this G, I'm going to say, I could try to say, well, I could see the same shape. What would it look like in open position versus there? So if I was to say, here's my G. Now, I often like kind of compare it to my pointer finger. So here's where my pointer finger would be. And I have like the opposite shape here. In other words, if I looked at it from the percentage of the pointer finger, I've got the pointer middle ring versus, point, I'm sorry, pointer middle pinky versus pointer ring pinky. So I probably want to start with the pinky, or sometimes I might want to start with the ring to get a little bit more power there on, on that note. But I can go back here. If I played the same thing on this side, so now I'm on this side. I, if I had the same fingering, I'd have my pinky here, and then the nut, right? And then, but that's not how it's going to be because I have because now I'm I'm shifted up, and I obviously don't have to finger the nut, so I can finger it a little bit differently. So the top string, I have open pointer ring, open pointer ring, and then open uh, ring. Sorry, open middle ring. And so I can then I can go back here and say, okay, I had this shape where it was. Right, and, th and so then I can kind of mirror those two shapes. So if I was to play an open G. So basically then play in open position here and then jump up to this one the way we've done in the past to practice this position which we're probably less familiar with so I could play like the G Sliding 
focus around this G. So let's focus around that G. And then I can kind of mirror that back here and say if, if I was going to say that's going to be my point of focus, or let's say my point of focus is this G, and then I can look at kind of what is around it. So if I'm looking at this G, my most important notes above it, I have the fifth, and below it, I have the third. So that's going to be this D and this B. So obviously that little A shape, perfect little shape, and I can close it out with this shape or reaching up to this shape. So that puts me right in the middle to go either way. Bottom half of the shape, or starting with the D on top to reach up to this one on top. So if I'm within here, there's, there's my G. I can go from the G to the A. I can go up above it to the D to the to the E F. And then down below. down here so I, I could kind of mute these top two and just play the bottom part which is going to be this open D G and B and then I can go to the here's my open G to the A kind of thing up top I could say I'm going to go from G to a C to a F to a G and I'm going to jump up to my G up top second wrong bit I've got this shape around it which is kind of fun to play and pretty easy to see uh, to some extent once you kind of once you get a handle of it so we have this G up top and then we can play around in essence this shape so so usually if you're gonna play something around that like if I was playing this G I'm holding down this finger so in open position I have this box and then the open position right so I have double stop open double stop double stop so that's kind of nice because it's easy to kind of reach down here. double stop double stop similar thing down here I'm reaching up to this G if I play it with my pinky I'm probably gonna reach up to this uh, a shape right here when I close it out so I'm probably gonna reach up to that so I get the full sound to make it sound like a G instead of this being a little high and then I can see that when I'm looking here I have the box on this side Like that the hard thing here is that we're ending it off on the highest pitch note which is why you're probably going to lean it back to this when you're when you're kind of finishing it off or possibly even when you're starting right so if i was playing something down here
and then go back to an F. together we could say all right well what if i want to tie this shape into the prior shape so maybe i want to look at at this g let's, i'm trying to pick the you know what i'm trying to do excel i'm trying to pick that g and so and maybe i want to lean that back to this shape which is going from this a shape it's an a shaped g which is leaning up to this one to this one. So, so maybe if I'm over here and I'm trying to say, how can I link these shapes together? Then I'm going to go, okay, well, if I'm on this side, then I'm looking at this G, which is leaning forward, this kind of A-shaped G. I can noodle around in this position. So I have kind of like these double stops over here. I'm probably going to start thinking of how to move from this pointer finger up to my G right there, which allows me to lead into this G shape or to that G shape. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, if my pointer finger is right here, I can pick it up, boom, and then I've got these double stops, which I can move up that way, which gets me up into here, which I can end like that or like that. So I can get more fancy with that. to get down to the bottom bit down here so I could say all right if I'm if I'm going from from this a position I can try to get my fingering down to this bottom part so I can say okay if I'm on this a there's my c shape or that's a c that's a d shaped c major which I could then convert basically to my G, like so, something like that. Uh, I have when I I can go down here and say I'm gonna. I've got my double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop all the way up to here, and I can lean that back. So I could go back and say, okay, what if, I, what if I go back another one? So there's that G. If I lean it back to the C-shaped G, this is a what I would call a C-shaped G because this goes boom, 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 and try to get that to lean forward to this one. So maybe I'm, if I'm looking at this shape, then, my, then I'm playing like a, a C-shape. This way I could play it this way. I could play it this way. And I'm trying to possibly get my this finger here. Maybe I'm, I'm here's my pointer finger. Maybe I'm trying to get this pointer finger up to basically this spot so I can lean it forward to this shape. So I can say, all right, well, what is around that? If I'm going to move it up, I'm going to basically move it up to here, right? So I'm going to say, duh, 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 try to get it up to basically uh, this position. So I could say, all right, well, here's. C shape. So now I'm on this. I, I put my, the same finger back up here, but I can move that. So that brings me up to pivoting forward to this shape. So now I'm on this shape, leaning forward again, 
which gets me to my good old problem here. Brings me up to this shape, which I can then play this way if I so. Something like that. So I could also say, well, if I'm playing, I could play this little uh, D shape down here. So if I'm playing this shape here, I could play it. Oops, hold on a sec. If I'm playing this shape, here's the D shape right there, where my now I have my uh, ring finger on this uh, G, which we could then try to move forward from there and say, okay, if my ring finger's on this G, I could basically move up all these double stops. See how they're all kind of paired up top here. So if I'm on uh, this G, I have the double stops going from here, 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 and that gets me to this. So recognizing all those kind of uh, pairs allows you to kind of see you can play within each of those boxes. Double stop. way as well and then we're going to go from that one and let's go back then from this G leaning back this way so we might this might be our most familiar shape to a lot of people our our shape one on on the fifth fret but this time I'm focused on the G so the G would look like this if I'm leaning it forward, this is kind of kind of a cheater way to play because I'm not playing this this bit right there. I'm going boom, boom, boom. You can see that if I lean forward, it's that D shape. So it's a D shape G, and I'm in my familiar place. So now I can kind of maneuver up to possibly this G, which I can then lean forward to a C shape, right? So I can say, all right, I can go. Here's my double stops. And that brings me into this leaning forward kind of A shape, which again I can lean forward this way, which brings me into my current position. So we could also say, well, what if I wanted to maybe, if I had that shape instead of going down to that, I can go up to this G right here possibly. So if I'm if I'm looking at this uh, shape, you know, I'm trying to say, okay, how can I get from there? Maybe just taking this line straight in here, and then once I get my finger up top, I can I can lean this fat backwards into a G shape, or forwards, I'm sorry, into a C shape, or forwards into a an A shape G. They're both G's, right? So I can say all right well if i'm if i'm here i got did it i got did it did it and then i can basically maneuver up here so i can say and then that leans back into this g so now i'm in this c c shaped uh g going this way another way i might do that if if i was up here i'm back here again trying to get my pointer finger on that G was uh, was the difference I was trying to do there let's bring it back another we're gonna say okay so if I go there's my uh, D shaped if I bring it back to here then here's my normal G if I pivot that forward on this finger I get to this G that's gonna be a you can call that an E shape that's our bar G I can play like that I can put my finger down here as well if I play it this way, my finger's kind of up top on this G, 
So I can think about how, what am I going to play around that area. So I can say, all right, I have this box up here that I can play around. And then maybe I lead into this box up top, which is my most familiar shape down to this, this G. So I can say. <laughs> brings me up here and so now I'm back into this position which is my D position again so I have my same problem here so then if we bring it back one more we could say then I'm in open position or well let's just do one other thing if I play this this position like this this is quite common a very comfortable g right here it's just basically this f you might be familiar with the f moved up so that's the other way to play it and then if you do that you've got your finger down here which is a kind of comfortable position on the bottom end and i can move my my pointer finger up down here and say all right i have my pointer finger here i know this shape is good double stop double stop can move that up to here. I know this. That gets me this shape. So we can maneuver around that way. And then if I bring it back to this side, then we have our open G here. And now we have our, our G uh this way so now we're going to say okay so now i can pivot around this one Here's my g easiest pivot point might be well obviously these top two so if my pivot is up top here i could turn that around so i can play with it here turn it around this way so now i'm forward in my G shape like this which my my fingers up top again so I have my finger my pointer right there down here then I've got I've got this this whole thing I can kind of play around with and kind of maneuver up on the bottom side so I have this I know that I have doubles, not doubles. So all that's good if I go up to this one I have the same I'm good up here too so now I'm up in this area so I have these double stops I can play with And now I'm in my familiar shape five or shape one, where I have this. So that's going to be, you know, the general idea. We can kind of come up with lines and pivot around these the g the g's to kind of noodle within these shapes and try to find lines as we're playing around the g meaning we're basically playing in mixolydian learning these same shapes but playing around the g as as opposed to uh around uh the c and the easiest way to do that like i said is usually thinking about where your which fingers are you going to move up it doesn't always have to be of course your pointer finger but when you're when you're thinking it's like what am i going to do i have all these fingers everywhere the easiest way is usually to think where's my pointer how can i create a line going up and then you can be playing within any shape and how can you basically maneuver up and back so that i still sound like i'm in the key that i'm in which is going to be playing around the fifth which is basically uh mixolydian right so that's going to be that's the general idea and as you do that by the way 
note that you have this open G right here. So, so that's really useful because it, oftentimes it's, it's nice. I like playing in this G right here, which is this bar shape. We'll talk more about position, this whole shape later in position five, but we've seen, and then, and you can always play that open G. The G is actually pretty fun, pretty fun to play. It's one of the more fun uh, major chords to play because you have that open G where you don't have an open C uh, and you don't have like an, an open uh, F. So it's pretty nice here. 